When it comes to the NSX Edge, we have to basically define the difference between a DLR and an Edge Services Gateway. A distributed logical router is the device that you install into the ESXi hosts in that cluster that those hosts belong to, to do east-west routing. Where a distributed lot or an edge services gateway is a services gateway. It's got a lot more features available to it than a DLR does. And if I was to click here on edge one, for example, you're gonna see summary tab, configure, firewall, bridging, DCP relay, DNS, and routing. But if I go and I deploy an edge services gateway, which is done in a very similar manner to a DLR, the difference between the two, if I was to bust out my pen tool real quick and draw this out, is you have your ESXi host, right? Draw a couple of those out. So this is gonna be my compute cluster. I deploy a DLR here and a DLR here. Uh, they're the same DLR and I associate a couple of logical switches to the, the DLR, right? When I have the DLR and stuff like that deployed, these guys are gonna communicate, there's gonna be some sort of physical connectivity up to the upstream network. So this will be the physical net. Well, what's gonna happen is we need to allow communication on the DLRs to the rest of the network. Because the DLRs themselves aren't designed to connect upstream to a physical environment. That, that wasn't ever their goal. They are a kernel module that is deployed to the ESXi host to facilitate east-west communication. That, that's their job. Is there some more features that you can add to it? There are, but just understand that the Edge Services Gateway has more features that are available to us. So if I was to take one more host, and this will be the management cluster, and then I'm going to draw another physical, the physical net here, connect in like that, and then connect here. I'm not gonna deploy a DLR here, so no DLR, right? What I am gonna do is I'm going to deploy an edge services gateway. Now remember, the the DLR control VM is sitting here on my management host. I'm also going to deploy an edge services gateway with a control VM. Now the edge services gateway is going to have a connect connection on itself. This guy right here will be a internal interface. That's supposed to be internal, not internet. Now on the DLRs, we're gonna have the logical switches, right? These logical switches are gonna be internal interfaces. However, these links right here are going to be used as uplink to get to the ESG. However, we're not going to tie to this link right here, right? That's not what we're gonna go do. What we're gonna go do is we're gonna create what they call a transit. Let me pull this back a little bit. The transit logical switch. And this transit logical switch is going to be another logical switch that we're going to have to create. And you create this transit logical switch that connects into the ESG. So this will be just another logical switch and it'll be a part of the both the compute and the management transport zones. So the, the logical switch will sit on top of it. We'll, we'll create this. This is going to be an uplink for the DLR to the outside. And that's going to go, when we go to configure this, this will automatically get added to all the DLRs. Because you got to remember the DLR is, when you configure it once, you're associating that to every one of the ESXi hosts. Once you have that in play, the ESG's internal interface is actually the transit logical switch that communicates or connects the DLR to the Edge Services Gateway. Now the on this host right here, since we are running a VDS, we're going to create a port group, a distributed port group, that is going to allow us to connect to the outside. And we're going to give this some sort of VLAN ID 
that will allow us to communicate outside. I'll just set this up as a trunk. And that'll allow us to connect upstream to our our router and things like that. That's basically how that's going to come into play. When we go through and do this, this this is going to be a distributed port group, and this will connect to is the uplink on our ESG. This will allow us to connect to both the CSR 1000 V or my 3750X that I've got running in the network. Because I'm going to show you guys how to deploy both OSPF, BGP. I will do some static routing and show you guys how to get that all working. So I'll take a look at a, a couple different variations of how, how it gets rolled out. But it's important to understand how all this gets tied together because in the event that you are playing around with this and it's not working, this is going to be the reason why. And so this goes over here and connects into that DLR as well. So let's go ahead and deploy this so we understand what it is we're trying to accomplish. First thing we have to do is add an edge services gateway. I'm going to come in here and call this the DC1-ESG1. The host name is going to be DC DC1-ESG1. I'm going to deploy an edge appliance with it. So this will give us more flexibility. And it says, uh, it says, select this option to create a new NSX, NSX Edge in deployed mode. Appliance and interface configuration is mandatory to deploy the Edge. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and give this a password. Oops, and we have, that has to be a 12 character password too. And then we're going to come down here and give it SSH access. We're going to Gen auto rule generation means that we're automatically going to generate rules for the firewall for any of the services that we need that are going to be running. The ESG will automatically create them for us. So we won't have to create rules for BGP or OSPF. It'll automatically do that for us. Now the deployment, I'm going to deploy a single edge appliance. So it's going to be one CPU, 512 megs of RAM. And it's going to ask me where I want to put this. I'm going to put this on the management cluster and the data store. The host is going to sit on its host bore, obviously. I'm going to click on Add. I'm going to click on Next. And now I have to associate the interfaces. I'm going to click on Add. And this interface right here will be my transit connection. So I'm going to call this Transit, because that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a transit connection. I'm going to call it an internal interface. And I'm going to go to the, and you can see right now I don't have any logical switches created. No harm, no foul. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, come over here to networking and security real quick, and I'm just gonna go create it. So on the logical switches, I'm gonna come over here. I have my couple logical switches. It needs to be associated to the DC1 transport zone. I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna call this LS transit, and associate it to the DC1 transport zone. Click on add. Now that that's been added, I'm gonna go back to here, hosting clusters. Uh, now I will be able to go here and come back, and now LS Transit shows up. I'm going to click on LS Transit, click on OK, and then I'm going to give it an IP address. Now I didn't spec I didn't talk about this earlier, but you need to give it a subnet that can connect the two together. So because of the fact that I'm dealing with the 172.29 address range, I'm at 172.29.11 because we're connecting DLR1 to ESG1, and I'm going to go ahead and give the ESG the IP address of dot .1, and this one a 24-bit mask. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. I'm going to add, I don't have any other connections at this moment. I will talk about that in an upcoming video. I'm going to continue moving forward. The I don't have a default gateway configured. Well, when I do, I'll configure that part right there. Click Next. I'm going to enable the firewall and put a allow uh, the allow is the default traffic policy and turn logging on and then I'm going to go ahead and finish the deployment. Now this is also going to push a box to the the network down here. So you'll see the ESG get pushed here. So this will take some time. Sometimes it's it's down here. So sometimes you have to hunt for the uh, OVF deployment piece. 
Now, while that's being pushed, I'm going to go to the DLR, clicking on him, and underneath the configure option, there's interfaces. Now on here, I'm going to add an interface. I'm going to go over here, click on add, and it's going to ask me what it is that I want to do. I'm going to come in here and call this transit. This is going to be an uplink on the DLR. On the connected to, I'm going to go over here to click on transit because I'm going to connect the DLR uplink to the transit logical switch that's going to connect me to the ESG. Click on OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and add. The IP address here will be 172.29.11.2 slash 24 and click on add. So that's going to go ahead and push that config to the DLR. So it's going to take a couple seconds for that to actually do its thing, but now it's now it's been deployed. If I come over here, we can see that the Edge Services Gateway has now been pushed, which is what we want to see. Now that I've got that in play, I should be able to go back over here to my DLR and do a show interfaces, do a show IP route, and you can see that the 172.29 subnet is now residing here. If I do a show interfaces, we should see that one showing up. We do it. The VDR is one, I'm sorry, not that one. We can see that VNIC 2, 172.29.11.2 is sitting here and everybody is happy there. Now I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to click on the Edge Services Gateway and I'm going to go to launch the web console. It's going to take a couple seconds for it to do its thing. I'm going to go ahead and log in as admin and the password. And if I come in here and I do a show interfaces, I will have internally, I will have the 172.29.11.11 or 11.1. And I should be able to ping 172.29.11.11.2. That, I, that's pingable. I come over here to the DLR and move the DLR over one. I should be able to ping 172.29.11.1. And for whatever reason, it is not wanting to behave. Not sure why that is, but that's okay. I'll come back to that here in just a moment. So we have all, all that deployed. So the next thing for us to go do would be to validate that the communication for, well, we've, we've validated that things are working. The thing that we, now that we have the ESG deployed, which it's actually kind of bothering me that the ping is failing from the DLR up. So I've had this happen in the past where I've actually had to blow away the DLR and redeploy it because it wasn't working. So let me go back over here to the ESG or the, the DLR, excuse me. Let me come back over here and we're going to click on the ESG or Edge 2. And you can see there's a lot more options available to us than now than there was before. So one of the things that we can do now is turn DHCP on. We can do NAT. We can do load balancing, VPN, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's basically where this comes into play. So we go down here to interfaces underneath configure. We can see that we're, we're set up there. I'm going to go and let me troubleshoot this real quick. I've had to do this in the past where I've had to blow away the DLR. So let me go ahead and just knock that out real quick. I'm going to go and I'm going to delete the DLR and it's going to say, are you sure? Yes. So I'm going to quickly troubleshoot that. So that will get rid of the DLR. So the DLR is now gone. I'm going to go add DLR. And I'm going to go ahead and call DC1 DLR1. The host name is going to be DC1 DLR1. I'm going to go next. Specify the password. And you might be saying, didn't you just do this in the previous video? I did. But sometimes when you are configuring things, especially when you're adding features to stuff after you've deployed it, I've noticed that there's some inconsistencies. So I'm going to go ahead and redeploy it just to be safe. 
and password mismatch. So me. There we go. Turn SSH access on. Go next. We're gonna go ahead and add an edge appliance associated to that the, to the management cluster. Data store will be DS1. Click on add. They connected to. We're just gonna go ahead and add that to the management port group. We're not actually gonna configure it. We can configure an IP address here if we want to. We can type in uh, 10.0.0.200. For example, I mean, I don't think I have any IP addresses that high, and I don't. So and we'll go ahead and slash 24, associate that, click next, and then we're going to add the interfaces. The first one I'm going to add here is going to be the uplink, which will be transit, and we're going to associate that to the transit logical switch. Click on OK, and then I'm going to add the subnet, which will be 172.29.11.2 slash 24, click on OK. We're going to add an interface. This will be the uh, LS. We're going to do con one. Well, we'll do. I forgot what I called it before. Um, LVM one through two. This will be internal, and we're going to associate that to con one. We're going to give the IP address of 172.29.1.1 slash 24. Click on OK. Add one more. We're going to type in LVM 3 through 4. This will be an internal connection. Connect that to the other logical switch. Add and then 172.29.2.1 slash 24. Click on OK. Click Next. And the default gateway. Okay, this is what I, I don't think I had set up before. Um, so I'm going to say it's on transit, the gateway IP. I could either set, specify that or I can another interface. And then the gateway IP is going to be 172.29.11.1. This will give us a default gateway. It'll actually be a default route in the DLR. I'm going to click on next and then finish. So that's going to get pushed. This DLR is going to go away. I'm going to go ahead and jump back over here. This DLR is going to get pushed. It'll take a couple of minutes for it to actually get pushed down to, if I re refresh this, DLR 0 is going to get pushed. That'll take a minute or two. I'm going to go ahead and pause until that's finished. All right, well, I didn't notice this, but it looks like when I was trying to reconfigure the, whoops, it uh, didn't like what I was trying to do. Insufficient memory resources to satisfy the, that's not cool. So we're going to go ahead and refresh this and we can see it's associated to the management port group in the, the transit logical switch. So now he's on board. We're going to go ahead and open up the console. Now we can see it's DLR1 admin and then the password. And here we go. So I'm going to do a show IP route and we can see that there's a default gateway. So I'm going to go ahead and ping 172.29.11.1, and that is that's not cool. That should be that should be reachable, and I'm not sure why. Actually, that this is responding for some reason. So in this case here, because it's not responding. Okay, fine, no, no big deal. If I do a show IP route, we can see that 11.1 .1 is the only thing that we have connected to this guy. Then that that's fine, because that's where we're currently at. In the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to go through and set up some basic static routes. So we're going to route from the inside to the outside and get all that stuff squared away. With that being said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me, and I'll catch all of, all of you in the next video.